thank you for talking with me. I'm uh, I'm honored. Oh, I the honor is mine. Uh, pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, you know, as I said just a moment ago, I have had a crush on you for a long time, uh, and to this very <laughs> minute, I thought you were French. But of course I'm French. I don't understand why you think I am not. I do a very good American dialect, though. Very good. <laughs> you do. Uh, was dialects always something easy to you? I just always had an ear for it. Um, my parents had a dialect. They they talk this a German dialect. They talk like this. And uh, but actually, it's funny because I never actually heard it. But my and my friends talk like this. You know, they would be talking like that. So I would have to learn. Uh, my manager said to me, "You can't talk like that." I'm like, "What do you mean? What am I talking like? I have no idea what you're talking about." And so, uh, they, you know what they said? They uh, at the time when I was growing up, um, they said to change your voice. Uh, watch the news speak like people in the news and that's how i learned to speak without a dialect <laughs> uh and i'm verklempt as uh, <laughs> verklempt i <laughs> i lost my new york accent long ago i i, I was uh, born in canarsie uh, oh wow good voice though right just well, it's i have you know you have that ear uh you know you know where yeah you're on, you're on 48th street you know just pretty much that exact I love it I love it uh with with that type of um talent that you have I, I'm assuming that you've done a lot of uh a animation and voice work oh my goodness guess what I have done very little um and in <laughs> fact I would love to do it in fact actually a woman contacted me recently and said I want to represent you for voiceover and I thought wow I would love to because I've done I, I can do a lot of different voices. Um, I have a good ear for it. Um, but I think, you know, uh, there's so many people who are just naturally gifted with their unusual type of voice. Those are the people that that shine. So yeah, I don't know, it's just interesting, but I do love voices. And I, I mean, I love dialects and I love, I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for any voice I do. I'm not, I don't come from a place where I'm making fun. I come from a place of fascination um, and just loving the, loving how we sound like everybody sounds different and that you can tell where someone's coming from you know from by their voice i don't know it's just it's been fascinating to me yeah uh, well my aunt was june foray who was uh the voice of rocky the flying squirrel and natasha oh, and all of that so I, I love voice work bravo i mean she is the queen that is amazing the queen absolutely in doing those dialects that that informs your character and that uh, certainly helps with with the character analysis that you must have to do when you're performing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the key is, first of all, what you need to do is, you know, obviously you have to hear it and then you have to break it down to as close as you can to what is spoken. And look, language changes, it evolves. So whatever was speaking maybe an 80s Irish dialect is different than a today's Irish dialect. Everything's <laughs> changing, right? And then on top of it, um, then there's the acting, you know, the emotion that comes behind it. And I mean, I remember once having to do a dialect. Um, I mean, and I've done Southern, I've done Yugoslavian, I've done New York, I've done um, French and German. And I, so I, but when, once I had to do an accent where um, a, it was a German accent and I had to talk. And when you speak German, there was a lot of, there's, the, you say, you know, that kind of sound. But when you, act it you can't do that because it's too thick and a lot of people don't understand it so you have to say stu and so it's interesting so even even if you try to get accurate with the dialect you still have to perform and it has yeah. to come clear and it has to be and it has to roll off your tongue as if it didn't even it didn't even exist and there are those actors that just like you that like kenneth mars god bless him i mean he can do anything and, and uh they they just the fall. baby <laughs> the baby <laughs> right. my babies uh, and and do you do you teach dialect at at any point I mean would you would you consider doing that oh oh yes I um you know it hasn't been my main focus I actually do teach uh, kids acting I I teach kids and and college students and uh, people who want to be actors I do private coaching. Um, but, and I make it part of the thing, one of the things that I include in teaching is dialects. Yeah, so I mean, if anybody had any interest in learning dialect, they could certainly contact me. I mean, I I don't have a lot of time. That's the thing. <laughs> I have been so busy lately and I, I can't even tell you. It's been, 
it's unbelievable and it's awesome. It's it's wonderful teaching and and acting and working and striking and oh my gosh, everything. Yeah. This plethora of independent films now that is going to be uh, exposed because of the strike. I think it's a, I think it's it's going to be brilliant because it gives a chance for younger and and uh, uh, less known directors and producers to to have a spotlight that's almost on an even keel with the you know big studios. Well, I think what is amazing about this right now is the only reason I can do this is because uh, like for this film Waking Nightmare, the only reason I can do publicity for it is because it is an independent film, it's not associated with associated with the big studios, but it's also on um it's going to be distributed on a private platform. And so that's the other reason like you know you have an independent film but if it's coming out on Amazon you can't talk about it right now. Um and my feeling is that it is giving people with who are independent filmmakers more of a voice, more of an opportunity to be seen. Um, and it also, I think, is going to show the audience, yeah, like, I mean, I think it works in a way for everybody. You can see what do indie people do that's different than, say, the commercial films. You know, uh, can we get maybe deeper into the stories and the character with an indie film that maybe we haven't been able to do in a lot of the commercial films? We try. But it, there is a definite difference, and I think just as an actor, um, I just I like the fact that I can do both worlds. And um, but I really always want to help the young filmmakers, the new ones coming up, because I think that's important. We have to guide them, help them in any way, shape, or form. If I can, that is a gift. Let's talk about Waking Nightmare. How did the project land on, on your lap? Well, I got very fortunate because I guess since I have done work in the 80s, I did a lot of films um, and I did all kinds of films, com films, comedy, drama um, and, uh, you know, horror. Um, I've been able to have a wide range. And so my work has been out there for a while. So people have seen it a lot. Some most people, a lot of people have seen it. I'm saying most people. Um, and this young director contacted me, um, Brian, and he said, I'm interested in you playing this part in the film. And I was really uh, surprised because usually when I'm, you know, I usually audition for things or even if I don't audition, you know, I'm thinking someone's going to hire me for something that they've seen me do before. And I was so excited that, you know, what's been happening is he's, people have been coming to me with pieces and they can trust me as an actress and they can envision me in a role that I perhaps never have done before. So the closest role I've ever had to this part uh, in Waking Nightmare is a movie of the week I did called Summer Girl. But this movie, if you remember me from the 80s as a sweet, innocent, fun, nice girl, do not watch this film <laughs> because this film it will change your mind. It will blow you away. You have not seen anything like this uh, from me, ever. But isn't that what an actress wants is, is, is to, to go from one extreme basically to another and show off, uh, you know, and, and not be pigeonholed? Uh, per absolutely. I'm going to tell you that my, what, what gets me and what gets me thrilled and excited is a juicy part, a, a, a role that's a challenge to me, something I've never done before, something interesting, um, something that pushes me beyond my comfort zone. That's what makes me tick. It, it, it may, the script is, I mean, I, I look at scripts and I, there are certain scripts I would not do, but and I, I, what intrigued me about this film when I got the script was the subject matter of like someone having uh, these attacks when they're sleepwalking and they start, you know, I just was the, the whole world of that was so new to me. I thought that was an interesting place to go. Um, but the characters are what really bring me to do a film now. And this character, I saw it when I saw the character of Danielle, I went, okay, I can really do something with this. I can take this and go crazy and, and have a range that's insane. So I, I'm i excited for people to see it. And I really hope that if you do see it, contact me and let me know what you think because you may not trust me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you well, may not trust me and it's, uh, yeah, I'd be interested to hear what you have to think. But when you, when you take on a role like this, I mean, 
do, as you're putting this character together uh, as an actor, do you look for the similarities in that character to you or the total differences and work off those notes? Well, you have to relate to your character in some way. You know, obviously you become that character. You you live it. I mean, I know that when I when I work on my characters, like I I look at the person and I try to get into obviously the psychological aspect of how I would put myself in that situation. Um, and it's a very personal and private world. You know, you put yourself in and you let go and you just then you're in the moment and you just let it kind of. Uh, for me, like I like the discovery of the character. Like I, when I perform, I don't know what's going to happen, but I do have ideas in my head of what I, how far I want to go, and, and that I want to push myself. And then I have the, I have to say, like, um, you know, I think we all, in everybody's nature, has the ability to connect to all these characters. It's just you have to find the through way within yourself, and that's what I do. So, like I always say, like you can have a a two year old will have a tantrum just as strongly as a, a person who's playing, you know, Hamlet and like have a breakdown, you know, like you just, they're gonna have those emotions inside them and it's just the context of where you put it, you know? So I think for me, um, I'm just excited for people to see what is in my imagination on screen. Were you exhausted after each scene? I mean, playing? Oh, absolutely. 100%. And and the funny thing too is when I'm when I'm working, I let it, you know, I let go of everything and I, I have it, but then I'm absolutely tired and I have to like refill the cup, you know, during the evening. Um, you know, and and I live that that character while I'm doing it too. So there's a part of it that is I'm not that I go around being evil, you know. <laughs> That's not my I don't have to do that, but I do you do have to carry it with you. You can't just, you know, kind of drop it and bring it. It's because you're in that world and you're making discoveries while you do it. So I uh, I just love the process of acting. Just love it. I just love it. But you also wear the hat of a producer too. Well, yes, that's interesting. I have produced some things. Um, I'm really good at making things happen. Um, I don't, uh, you know, people have come to me with their projects and they want me to produce them. I'm, I'm not that kind of person, but I can get people to move it to the next level. Like if someone had a project and they wanted to make it happen, I, I know how to make things move forward. I just, I don't even know why. I think it's just probably because I've done things so long. Um, but um, yeah, I actually, I've done, I mean, most recently it was kind of funny. I did a music video and I just produced it. I wrote it, I sang it, I, I got, you know, um, it recorded and I, I, you know, got the actors and people participating in it and uh, got it shot and, you know, I just made it happen, you know, and it's just like, I don't even think about it as being something impossible. I just was like, I, that's something I want to do. So I think you just have to be stubborn. Working with family, you work with your daughter uh, on, on a project or two and, and uh, was that a joy? Oh, anytime I work with my daughter. It's a joy, and my and my son is a musician. I haven't worked with him, but we, um, I you know I adore my kids and my daughter. Oh my gosh, we have done so much together. She's directed me. Um, I've helped her. I've helped her with projects. Uh, her name is Olivia De Laurentis. So if you are interested, she's on TikTok and she does comedy um, with a comedy partner named Sid Heller. And it's uh, so you look up Sid S Y D Olivia and Olivia on TikTok, you'll find her. But she's done so much. I mean, she's an actress. She's a comedian. She's a writer. Um, and of course, you know, now with the writer and the actor strike, yeah. she's out, you know, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm the one who's like promoting. Um, <laughs> but she's the one who should be, you know, doing her thing. Um, but you'll see a lot more of her. She's an amazing performer and um I, I will add this to she was actually supposed to be in waking nightmare hmm. and unfortunately uh we had a little bit of a waking nightmare when we did the project and so i'm not gonna get into it but i'm just letting you know that let's say let's just say when you hire some people to be in a movie you want to make sure that they see the script and know exactly what they're going to be doing there but anyway Good moving advice. on <laughs> moving on um, let the actors know do you miss live theater Oh, I, you know, that's funny. I love live theater. Funny, I actually, and have another 
feather in my cap. I actually direct live theater. Isn't that crazy? In um, I, direct, I direct kids and I've been directing musicals for these kids for, I don't know, 20 years. Wow. So I've been doing on the, you know, I, I direct uh, pay, um, musicals for fifth to eighth graders. The, um, the junior in, versions of, of, of larger musicals. Yeah junior versions but at colleges you know and big stage lights and stuff i'm really good with you know telling a story and working with the lighting person and you know i do choreography with them and so yeah i do have my hand in that as well so um i've been experiencing theater and i and i personally love theater um it would be great to do a play i mean i think that that's not far from something that i would be interested in doing if if it was presented to me so When you're not being America's favorite actress, um, what what do you do when you're, you know, not performing? Well, I do many things. Um, gosh, well, I work with kids, like I told you, um, and it's very fun. And I, I teach all different ages and I teach, like I told you, I coach. Um, I also travel. I just went um, and I did a... a talk with my husband he's a writer um and we didn't go to do anything except we brought our we went and traveled someplace to do it um talk to college students okay. and so oh yeah traveling doing different things and conventions i've done conventions i have a convention in florida coming up in february called pensacon sure. and another signing convention i i'm not allowed to say yet because they haven't announced it but i have another uh convention in the east coast in october do you enjoy so, that exchange with with your fans? I mean, so oh. can, uh, just chatting with them and, and 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 hearing what you mean to them. Oh my goodness, that's that's a gift. I mean, that is, it's, you know, I never ever ever have taken for granted the fact that I mean something to someone in their life based on them seeing in me in a role. When I was acting in the 80s, I didn't have a publicist. So the only way you knew about me was through my work. Yeah. So if you saw me in a film or, or television show and it, it hit you, that means that my work is affecting you. So when I meet people, um, I'm constantly amazed that they remember. I mean, this is a long time ago, you know, like 40 years ago, you know, 50 years ago. This is a long time ago. So for f people to come and say, wow, your work really meant something to me or helped me grow up or taught me something or um, just even the fact that they're just really happy to meet me. I love, I just like, that's the coolest. That's the coolest. And actually at the beginning when I did it, I was really shy. Like, I, I mean, it is kind of, kind of crazy, you know, when you meet a total stranger and they know you, but you don't know them. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> it's so a little like, what? I but I've been... That. Right, but I've been so fortunate because the people I've been working um, who come to me, who are my fans, are all really nice. Like I could probably say maybe two people in twenty years of meeting people that were a little bit like uh, a little scary, uh, and even in that case, I talked with them and we dealt with it. So, yeah, no, people are genuinely very nice because I think it is a wonderful thing to go back in time and and look at these films and you know, relive their childhood that way too. Yeah, but as a, as a person that watched you and, and uh, uh, you know, followed you on television and guest appearances on, you know, now dead television shows that no one ever knows. Uh, and, and then, you know, horror and uh, uh, comedy. I think you are a natural born comedian, but being that you take on drama so well because you find the, the the truth in in humor and you find the truth in drama it's the same process i think uh absolutely well you know people have asked me like why are you doing so much horror lately and it's because that's where the emotion is and that's where my roles are like it's you know it, i got i mean i'm not saying you know that all the roles are in uh horror but the the emotions that i you know can express are in those and and i think somewhat you know sometimes these indie films are a little bit kinder in hiring than they are when it's more commercial and the older women are not getting the parts or if they get the parts it's like well you're the token mom or the token grandmother or whatever and so 
the roles are richer to me in horror. And there's, of course, that's a big, you know, that word covers so many styles, you know, there's gore and then there's, you know, mystery and then there's crime. And then, so there's so many parts of that and it's become so boutique that I feel like there's drama within horror. And I have all parts of my personality. Like I said, you know, that's the other thing when I'm acting, you should be able to see a full person. I want you to see the full person. And I want, maybe not every role calls for that, but you know that if you see my work, I will give you as full of character as there permits in the story. comes to making plans, you are the best. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. When they said that I had a chance to talk with you, I just, I said, I didn't even ask when, I just said, oh, yeah. You well, I am going to tell everybody we're best friends now, so there. All right, all right. All right. Fantastic. You yep. are my friend. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't even dare do an accent in front of you. I can, I just, yeah. so there. Have a great day. Thank you so much, and au revoir. Have a wonderful day, too. Mm-hmm.